Good morning. Yum. Coffee makes life better. So, yeah, I've been out of commission for a little while. Uh, kind of lost my early summer. Super big drag, but nothing I'm not used to. Yes, it is uh, Lyme disease related for those who asked, um, but I hesitate to call it Lyme disease, and I think that's kind of a red herring at this point. I've, that's where I'm at in my evolution and thinking about the problem and about Lyme disease and about uh, chronic health issues and health in general. Today we're going to walk around and look at all the different projects that I haven't finished or that are in progress that need updating because there's... Enter chicken. There's, there's just a lot of them and I should have been making update videos over the last couple months, even the last year really. Uh, like for instance, Axe Projects will have their own video just because there's so many of them. In fact, I don't think I finished a single Axe Project on video except for the rawhide collar, maybe. Lots of updates. That's what we're doing today. The Cordwood Challenge. We had uh, seven people that caught a cord or more the first year without really even promoting it that much. I didn't really push it that much. Anyway, there'll be an update video on that. I've kind of been waiting till I feel better because I didn't want to do that. I don't know. I just wanted to do better, I guess. So my apologies to the participants. Um, that video is coming and I've worked on the web page. So I have a web page with all the different people and their pictures and videos and all that stuff. And I'll be asking for input on how to do the next um, Cordwood Challenge, uh, when to start it, how to deal with the Southern Hemisphere. Anyway, there's lots of stuff to discuss about that that I want to go into here. But if anyone has um, feedback on how to run it, um, I'm willing to listen to anything from here out. Between uh, this bin here, which I think is over 500 gallons, and this pile and a couple other piles I haven't brought in yet, I think I have over 800 gallons of charcoal, probably close to 900 gallons. Unfortunately, I didn't get any of that dug into the ground this year. I have a lot of experiments I want to do. In fact, I have so many that it's kind of like just competing uh, which ones are the most important. But actually getting those done is, is uh, can be a challenge. You know, it's a lot of digging and crushing is still a problem, like figuring out a accessible, easy way, convenient way to crush all of this. And, you know, I, I have a, a hammer mill, like a garden shredder I could set up. It's actually a pretty nice one and that should work great but uh, it doesn't solve the problem for like a lot of other people so i'm always thinking like what can i do come up with that is accessible that almost anyone could do even with large quantities because you can imagine like the job this could be if you don't have an easy convenient way to crush it that's a lot of charcoal tanning projects um the main one that people keep asking about is the one where i was testing a bunch of tanning materials and I collected, like now I have probably over 25 of them. So what happened with that besides, you know, juggling priorities and shifting priorities is the hide I was preparing got screwed up. So um, just over liming and dealing with the usual health issues and again, juggling priorities. So I have to prepare an entire new skin um, to do that project. It's a really neat project. I want to get back on it. I know a lot of people are interested in the results and uh, I definitely am. I've had these uh, tubs of wood soaking for a long time. I finally got around to, you know, processing some of that. I spent a lot of yesterday turning uh, billets on my lathe just to store away in season for later use. Um, there's still quite a bit here, a lot of axe handle blanks and stuff like that that I need to chop out. And I wouldn't recommend soaking stuff for very long. Um, like this wood actually is pretty smelly from, you know, just the sugars and stuff in there fermenting. Yesterday I got my lathe out and turned down a bunch of green wood into billets and put them away to season for later. And um, I'm going to be making some awls. Uh, my friend ordered a batch of awls for me and I figured I'd just make a batch while I'm at it. So should be seeing a video on that soon. Um, not really an instructional video, just, uh, you know, something interesting that I'm doing, I guess. We had a pretty good fruit set this year for apples especially. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of apples on Frankentree this year. Uh, the birds are really bad though. 
Um, you'll probably hear this one squawking over here, waiting for me to leave so he can start eating my apples. They wiped out the early apple crop. They'll move on to acorns as soon as the acorns are ready, which is about early September. And the acorns aren't ripe, they're just ripe enough to start eating. And the birds would rather eat acorns. They don't want to eat green apples, they're just hungry. So it's easier for me to get like the later apples. The birds don't hit those as hard. You know, with any luck at all, we'll have some uh, interesting apples to taste uh, this fall, hopefully. Here's one apple we could try right now. It's um, called Northfield Beauty. Uh, Albert Etter was really into this apple. It's probably a little not ripe yet, but it is an early apple. Yeah, it's actually pretty sweet. Um, it's good enough for cooking. It's a little bit starchy still, but yeah. So mid-August, it's it's ready for cooking. For dessert, I'd give it another week or two. This is um, Ellison's Orange. I think it's a little early, but I get one of the ones that's pecked by birds. Now this is um, an anise-flavored apple, like licorice -y fennel anise flavor. Well, it has a lot of that flavor, but it's not ripe yet. Trailman was late this year. This is what's left. The birds ate most of it. And if um, anyone remembers me talking about Trailman, it's a small edible crab. Last time I had it ripen in mid-July. It's very crunchy, very, very crisp. Nice flavor. Great apple. Unfortunately, it's shown itself to be very susceptible to scab this year. Here's another crab. The label is lost, unfortunately. This one's been munched on by bugs. That probably just means it's more ripe. I remember what this was called. I remember it at one point. Very good, very good. Extremely sweet. See that translucent look to the flesh? You get that a lot in really high sugar apples. Yeah, that's not bursting with flavor, but it has extremely high sugar. And the flavor that it has is very good. It's, it's uh, promising, very promising. Speaking of apples, here's apple butter. These three jars are from, no, these two jars are from 2015. And the only problem I've had with them is that they dried out a little bit too much because they're not sealed. This one just has a piece of parchment and then this paper over it, because that's what some of the old recipes said to do. So it's actually, this is kind of too dry now. Uh, same with this one. This is the stuff I made last year. So my conclusion at this point is to use a real lid and you know seal it off for moisture. You could also use wax paper or something like that. But the, here's a jar that I used most of it and the rest of this has just been sitting here. There's no spoilage, it's still, um, a very spreadable consistency. All of it is still delicious. If you haven't seen that video, um, watch it. It's on making shelf-stable apple butter that doesn't require any refrigeration or sealing at all, except to uh, keep it from drying out too much. That seems to be the big problem. Although if it was stored in a damp environment, it would probably absorb moisture and, and uh, that could also be bad news. I highly recommend trying to make some. It's absolutely delicious. Okay, this is Bite Me, my uh, apple seedling, and it's a uh, seedling grown apple. And I've sent out some scions last year, but it has revealed its weakness, which is scab. You can see all of that. Um, those spots are a fungal disease called scab. Now I had really bad scab in general this year on all the apples, or the ones that get it, some don't get it at all. This one was especially bad. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there, some varieties just get it really bad, and this is one of them, unfortunately. So we'll see how that goes over the next few years, but it looks like it's very scab prone. All right, here's a project that's not going very well. My apple breeding program is floundering just because I'm floundering and not having energy. 
Um, I've only watered this twice this year, but I did finally just go and buy some cheap, um, you know, soluble chemical fertilizer to put on there just to get them growing because they didn't grow at all this year. They didn't set fruit and that's because they're too crowded and they're not getting enough nutrition and water. Like I said, as an emergency measure, I just got some cheap chemical fertilizer and threw it on there just to get them growing. Um, right now, I don't really have the funds to put, do what I want with these, um, which is, you know, hire help to get in some irrigation and get the fertilizer I want, like kelp and stuff like that. Um, this is the, that was the oldest rose. This row is like in its maybe third year or something like that. And then here are the, the seedlings from this year. There's a full two rows here of those. That's the other one there. Lots and lots of them. Now these, um, I had more failures this year than any other year with these but that's no surprise because i harvested the scions late they were already pushing a lot of them then i stored the scions then i grafted them then i stored the grafted trees you know it's just like one thing after another and then when i planted them i like to shade them but there were just so many i couldn't shade all of these rows probably won't put any more in or not very many uh, the ones that died here um, it could be up to like 5%, I haven't counted. I have backups of most of those in the original seedling rows because I saved them. I actually have three years worth of old seedlings from this project. And I did grow some seedlings this year, but very few, and they're not doing well for the same reason. I'm not taking care of them. And I also made a bunch of pollinations, but the pollinations did not go very well this year. And then the birds are wiping out whatever's left and I haven't protected them. So same thing, until I feel better, none of this stuff's gonna work right. And I keep biting off, you know, big projects because I'm not willing to accept, you know, defeat basically. But realistically, you know, eventually something's gotta break. But I think what I'd like to do is, um, find someone who can actually run a crowdfunding campaign to get some funding for this project and manage it too. So they would like hire labor or do the labor themselves, make sure it gets done and make sure there's, you know, enough funds to at least get fertilizer and get in some uh, automatic irrigation. And as you can see, there are more onions here. These are also for sale on eBay. And th those have really helped fund this project a little bit, I guess. Um, although I've needed that money to live on pretty much, actually. So, um, but yeah, and that's improving. Like, I'm starting to meet my basic expenses between Patreon and uh, YouTube revenue, ad revenue, and people using my Amazon links. So it's really helped a lot, too. So uh, thank you all for that. But yeah, these are going to eBay, too. I didn't quite finish the grafting series. There were three more videos I wanted to do and um, and a and a q and a two two videos in a q and a but here's one that I grafted this year and if you're wondering what to do with your grafts now, just keep an eye on them and make sure that the wrapping isn't constricting the growth. If it's not constricting the growth, it doesn't really matter. In this case, there's a little bit of swelling here and it's slightly constricted. So I'm just gonna take a sharp knife, run it down one side. You can cut all the way through the wrapping and into the bark a little bit. It's not gonna hurt anything. And then, you know, you can peel it off or even just leave it and let it expand until it pops off of there. But if you have any doubts about it being healed enough or like if you have a lot of high winds, you may wanna rewrap it. And otherwise, let's see what else, if you get fruit on it it's okay to let the fruit grow if the tree is established and it's pushing growth on the scion but otherwise like if you're grafting a young tree or a new tree then you should take off any blossoms or fruit so this looks eh, dicey but there's no growth on it so i'm just gonna leave it here and i think it'll be okay now you'll see that this didn't grow very much and you'll see that occasionally if you graft really late, which this was, and also this was wood from a tree that was already growing, so it was just kind of an odd situation. But I can tell that it's still alive. There's growth here at the top, and these buds look fine. They look like they're still alive. So what this will do is it'll grow next year. Now if I had cut this off and removed all of this other older growth, it probably would have pushed these buds and started growing, but it's a little bit late to do that now, so I'm not going not gonna to do it. The garden in general has been pretty mediocre this year. Um, it's okay, I mean, some stuff's doing well. I just haven't really been able to take good care of it and 
give it lots of attention like it needs. The one possibly negative thing I've noticed about uh, this biochar bed in particular is that stuff in the biochar end seemed to wilt down sooner, like the water wasn't actually as available as the other end. And someone in a comment or somewhere, someone said that that is a phenomenon that happens if you get a certain percentage of uh, charcoal, like a really high percentage, because this bed is 33% charcoal. If I keep it watered well, it grows fine, but it seems like the wilt down point is sooner. And I've noticed this twice, but I'm still, you know, I still need to compare more, so I'm not jumping the gun on that conclusion, but um, that seems like it might be the case. All right, here's the biochar bed we've been following the most, the 10%, 5%, and 0%. Now the 0% end looks so bad because I actually quit watering it. That plant was doing poorly, but it wasn't doing that poorly until something mined under it like a mole or a gopher and pushed it up and messed it up. Disregard that one on the end, but as you can see, there's a general trend here towards the plants being larger in the end with 10% charcoal. Now that plant right there was so weak and so sickly when I first planted it that I almost pulled it out of the ground and replaced it. Um, compared to all of these down this way, it was, you know, the worst looking plant. Again, same thing, we're seeing much larger growth in the 10% charcoal section. Here's some lettuce I'm going to allow to go to seed. At least some of them. Actually, the ones that are flowering now are getting pulled out. That's not the variety I want. I want the uh, bronze beauty, also known as bronze arrow. Okay, here's the leek seed. It's uh, ripening. There, most of it has flowered now and it's just ripening the seeds. So those will be ready in the fall. They take a long time to ripen all the way. And I'll clean them out and get them for sale in my store. So those will be available pretty soon. So will onions. So I just harvested onions from this bed and several other beds uh, to sell on eBay. These are all perennial onions, yellow potato onion, this one was a, sh a really great shallot called Seeds Blum, which has become my favorite shallot. And also Copper Shallot, and I have EE Toy on eBay right now. Those are these little, little guys. I'll have um, either those individually or some kind of collection, either on my website or eBay, probably both. And the target date for that is September 1st. A couple people asked about this, so I did this video where I buried some peas in coffee grounds. Well, that experiment went south because, well, for a couple reasons. One is I didn't take care of it, so I didn't water it enough. And um, the other thing is voles. Um, I had voles just chewing the plants off at the bases and take them away. But I still did learn some things. Um, the ones with the coffee grounds over the top of them came up later, but they came up, I think, just as strong. And I think that was just physical, you know, like they had a harder time pushing through it or something like that. Uh, they were slightly greener. So the ones with coffee grounds were slightly greener. And that's probably just because they had extra nitrogen from the coffee grounds. Peas make their own nitrogen, but that doesn't mean they don't, you know, necessarily like a little extra. Um, but the main thing is that, you know, kind of the point was to see if the acidity or excessive nitrogen or anything like that would harm the plants in any way and if anything it seemed to uh you know they seem to do better so just a preliminary experiment if someone really wanted to prove that to the uh you know satisfaction of really critical people um you'd have to you know do more controlled experiments but you know i probably won't bother Now here is a real artichoke. I like to grow vigorous, large varieties, and this is one of them. This is a really primitive type, and I don't remember what it's called, but it was some like heirloom Italian or French variety. It's, um, it's really spiny, and it has large hearts and small scales. It's not really like a modern artichoke, but I do have other vigorous modern varieties too. I counted the heads on this between where I cut a head off to eat and all of these heads that I didn't get to harvesting. There's over 75 artichokes on this one plant. Now that's how it should be. And these other varieties, like uh, this one's Imperial Star over here, and those down there are Imperial Star, or there's one other variety that I have that I like. Anyway, they're all vigorous, and even these um, aren't quite as vigorous, but they'll produce, you know, 50, they could produce 40 or 50 heads each. And I find that those type of varieties are just more disease resistant and they're better at just taking care of themselves. I've tried Green Globe numerous times. That's the main one that people grow and I don't like it at all. It's uh, weak and disease prone. It gets aphids. At least that's been my experience, so. 
All right, that's uh, updates. If you have any questions on other projects that I didn't cover, except for axes, save that for later because that's going to be its own video, then uh, put them in the comments. And um, the only other one is the road series. So I said I would try to do a series of videos on building and maintaining country roads and what I've learned about that from doing this road. And I'll still try to do that this year if I can. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, I'm just going to keep uh, slogging away here and slogging my way through my not always fun life. There's a lot of great things about my life and a lot of potential. Like I'm just surrounded by potential. I see it everywhere. I see it in myself and I see it in interacting with you guys on this YouTube channel. And I'm going to keep trying to make that work whenever I can. I'll keep trying to solve my health problems because if I don't solve that, um, things just aren't going to work right ever. Yeah, like a homestead in particular is this, this convergence of like an environment with all these resources and all this potential and then like human industry and motivation and energy and intelligence applied to make something happen out of, you know, quote unquote nothing. If you're missing that critical element of energy, you know, which I often am, unfortunately, things just don't work right. And you need that energy not only to build the place up in the first place, but to keep it maintained. But I'm going to continue to prioritize content because I think that's the place I can do the most good. It's like I can let people know what I know to help them, you know, speed them up and forward them into doing this kind of stuff or being more self-reliant, doing their homesteading project or whatever. And um, I'm going to go edit this on my new computer which so far seems awesome, and I'm hoping that'll save me some time and be speedy. I'm gonna work on paying that off, uh, trying to come up with creative ways to pay that off and hopefully generate some content at the same time. And then some more equipment upgrades. Um, I, I'm ready to start upgrading my equipment. It's time, I think. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you soon in some interesting content, insightful, interesting, contrary content yeah i often find myself in opposition or disagreement with common you know common wisdom and common knowledge um, because they're often just completely off base or just so ridiculously oversimplistic that um as to be almost useless or even harmful yeah uh look at all that uh, smoke yeah this is just a normal Northern California summer, overcast with smoke for days at a time.